So far this earnings season, we've seen bank stock after bank stock sell off in response really to pretty terrific results until today when First Horizon broke the cycle. First Horizon is a Tennessee-based regional bank, long our favorite, one of the largest players in the South. And this morning, they reported a clean top and bottom line beat in response to stock rallied about 1.5%. That might not look like much, but it's big change from the post-earnings action we see to the rest of the group. Now, this company's had a rough year. First Horizon got clobbered when COVID shut down the economy. Makes sense. Lately, though, stocks come roaring back. You know, this is up 57% since we last spoke to the CEO six months ago. Investors crowd into the reopening plays that are well run. Let's take a closer look with Brian Jordan, the president and CEO of First Horizon, who always comes to see us at earnings, whether the market liked the quarter or not. Mr. Jordan, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, Brian, I've got to tell you, one of the pure joys I have is your conference calls. Why? Because you just tell it like it is. And you said, and I'm going to quote you, that that things would be a lot better if the rollout of vaccines would not have been woefully inadequate. Right there, you're telling us that that's what's stalling the economy, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. A vaccine rollout, I think, is is the key to everything over the course of 2021. Do we have to all get involved? Does First Horizon maybe connect with some of the sports teams, get the stadiums? Because I think you and I, maybe we're not as fond these days of how the government rolls things out. Well, I think that you're you're making a very good point. I think we all have to be involved. And in, in our case, our banking franchise is spread over 11 states. And if you look at our entire company, we're much broader than that. So we're working with trying to coordinate with the various states that we operate in. And we're trying to, to do what we can with working with health care providers, working with states to make sure that we provide access to our frontline people and to our bankers as soon as, as the vaccine becomes available for us. So that's you. You personally get involved. You make calls to get this better. Yes, absolutely. I've I've had calls with governors and and uh, leaders in in healthcare systems trying to figure out how it is that that we pull this off in such a way that we're not jumping the line in any sense, but we're in a in a position to make sure that our people are protected. And like every other business leader in the country, trying to make sure that we get this done as quickly and as expeditiously as we can and, and get this economy back to health. Well, that's what I think the private public partnership is what has to happen. Now, you made this acquisition and I loved it. I just, you know, I loved Iberia. My daughter went to Tulane uh, and I saw it down there. But one of the things I thought was interesting when I looked at the actual makeup of where some of these branches are, you've got a ton of exposure to a market that's the hottest in the country, to the oil and gas market. It's come back in the time since you closed on this. How are things going in that area? Things are, are starting to pick up, as you point out, oil and gas is, is making a comeback, and it's going to be a significant part of our economy for the foreseeable future. And so we think it's an opportunity to, to see some significant growth in those markets. We pointed out when we announced this merger, we're really excited about the expanded footprint that this puts us in. Pre-merge, uh, excuse me, pre-pandemic, at, at the time of the merger announcement, we saw this economy likely to grow in terms of households two, two and a half percent faster than the U.S. as a whole. Given what's happened with the pandemic and people moving, working from home, working more re- remotely, we think that the landscape has shifted a little bit more in our direction. And we, we're expecting to see faster growth across the oil and gas economy and across the southern economy as a whole. Yeah, me too. I totally share that. One of the great moments in your call was that we've had a little outfit on that I didn't think anyone was paying attention to called Encino. But Iberia was using that software and you're adopting it. That's we think that stuff saves money and it's better than any other kind out there. That's been your experience. Absolutely. We think that's the leading technology in terms of end to end process management and fulfilling consumer lending activity. And we are excited that Iberia brought it to the organization. Iberia Bank was using the tool and had very good success with it. And we're excited about adopting it across the whole of our franchise. Do, do you think that, uh, that bank technology is still in its infancy? A lot of banks haven't moved to the cloud. A lot of banks are just bringing in, say, customer rel- uh, relations management. Is there a lot more to do technologically for First Horizon? 
I think when we get to the end of this integration, we will have moved the ball significantly forward in terms of products and feature functionality. I think this, this notion of the, the back room and the core systems is likely to, to not change significantly over the foreseeable future. Financial institutions, almost exclusively, but not completely, use a whole lot of big iron mainframe-based systems right. that go back 20, 30, 40 years plus in some cases. And what we're having to do is make sure that we put with APIs front ends on these systems that allow us to, to sort of make the experience from a customer perspective, from a, a user interface experience, much better than it would be dealing with the old green string, screen technology. But the sheer lift of getting from a cloud-based infrastructure or core to from where we are today is a huge and expensive lift. And so I expect we in the industry will continue to use these big iron systems as long as we can make them work with a with a importantly um, focused customer experience that minimizes uh, anything uh, that would be inconvenient for them. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of legacy hardware out there that has to change. One last question, obviously, we had the election, we have a, a new president, uh, do bankers think even at the level of, oh, we got this new president that's going to help us? Or is it just really it's in your case, it's a regional issue and it won't impact the banking business? I think I think the the administration, the Biden administration has a, an opportunity to have a, a real positive impact. Uh, as you point out, our business tends to be more geographically focused, but the overall U.S. economy and and how policy around controlling the pandemic and rolling out vaccines is important. The legislative process particularly is important as it relates to additional potential stimulus in the economy. And then ultimately, you know, how do tax policies look? How do housing policies look? And all of that will affect the, the broader economy. So it'll have an impact on us. And I'm optimistic that, that we have with the Biden administration, what will be a, a thoughtful and, and forward-leaning process that I think will lead to a better economy over the course of this year. I know I'll take that, and our viewers will, too. Always great to see you, Brian. Brian Jordan, the president and CEO of First Horizon FHM, my favorite regional bank. Great to see you. Thank you. Thank you. May have money be back after the break. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.